Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Unknown. Uh, I'm Roman, and this is Luke. Aliens. Yep, aliens. This is what we already said we were going to do last week, but we got postponed because of the... But we postponed it for our mammals versus fish debate, uh, which we really enjoyed. Which I won. But, uh, yeah, so today's episode is going to be about aliens, and I wanted to start by just asking you, do you believe in aliens? Well, the universe is a pretty big place, so yeah, I, I, I'd say I believe in aliens. Do you want to, like, be a bit more specific about that? I do not want to be more specific. That's unfortunate, because that's kind of the whole reason for this episode. Uh, try that again? Uh, yeah, uh, I do not believe that they've, uh, come to Earth. Nor do I believe that the government's hiding them from us. I believe that if there are aliens out there, which I do believe that they are, that they haven't noticed us yet. Yeah, I probably, I, I think we have very similar opinions. Um, and unlike the ghost episode, we're both like really skeptical. I think we both agree that they definitely are out there and that we don't think that they've come here yet. Correct. Like, just to be more specific, um, I, I think, yeah, I think they're out there, but I think they're just as, like, in the dark as we are about whether or not other intelligent species exist out there. Um, and I guess that's a distinction we should make. It's like, sure, there, there's, it's very likely that there's life out in the universe, um, but it's a whole other ball game if it's intelligent. True, true. Like, like when we level. say aliens, are we talking about bacteria or, uh, us? I do believe that somewhere out there, there is intelligent life. I definitely think that's out there somewhere, and I don't think we'll be around to really, unless they come to us, I don't think we'll be around to see it happen, and if they do come to us first, that's a little frightening because that obviously means that they have technology that we don't. Who knows, maybe they'll arrive tomorrow. Also similar to a ghost episode, I wanted to start off with personal experiences. So, Got probed by an alien? Yep. But other than that, I uh, I haven't seen, like, a UFO. Right. Neither Like, a I. classic, like, flying saucer. I've always been like, oh, it's a plane, or, you know. But well, I have... That's not what a UFO is. A UFO is more than just a flying saucer. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, I haven't seen, like, the classic UFO. I could throw a rock across the room and hit somebody's yeah. head with it, and... For people who haven't seen it, it could be classified as a UFO, an unidentified flying object. I know, but in like the traditional sense. How about- Like when you type UFO into Google, you're going to get a picture of flying saucers, so I'm trying to say. I've heard about uh, sky trumpets, and ever since I heard about that online, I guess I've just had my ears open for them more often now, because I feel like you hear them all the time. I've never heard them before. I've wanted to But you to know what I'm talking them. about, right? Sky trumpets? Yeah, yeah, I know what they are. Okay. You you said you're hearing them all the time? Now? Not not all the time, you, but... That's I, like schizophrenia. Time. Yeah. <laughs> that's a different episode. Um, but, no, I hear them, like, during... Uh, like, during or, like, after storms. So maybe we just, like, like, a tornado siren in the distance, or, like, an emergency vehicle or something like that. But it doesn't sound like that. I guess I should describe it. It it just sounds like make literally, the sound right now. I can't. It's like I'm not even joking. Attempt. No. <laughs> it sounds like like the trumpets of heaven. Is is like is like it's like biblical level. Like the 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 sky is opening up and here come the angels. Like it sounds like nothing you've ever heard before. But. <laughs> Yeah, not like that. And so I I saw a video, it was like w just in the middle of nowhere Canada. And these loggers were out there in the woods and they were like, we, trust me, they, they were like, we know, we would know if there's like civilization around here. We're out here all the time logging. We do not know where this noise is coming from. So scientists are like, okay, um, our best guess is maybe like, like just, tectonic plates shifting or like a really strong avalanche like that's not what the noise sounds like at all you have to go look this up um i can like insert a screen grab from that video to so you know what you're looking for but um 
that's what caught my attention. And then I've heard it, yeah, like around like like during or like after storms. So I don't know if there's like a correlation to that or I, I don't know, but it happens like all over the world. It's not just in the Americas. The ice crystals suspended in the air reacting to the electrical currents brought to it by the storm. I know that sounds really wild, but honestly, like the best answer that science has currently is that it's just, um, yeah, it, it's like just wind hit like just the correct frequency. And it would make sense if it's in the mountains, mm -hmm. all that, the wind that just sweeps through those valleys and hills and stuff like that, who knows? Maybe it's just, I don't know. If somebody can shatter glass by singing at a certain frequency, I wouldn't put it past like the wind to cause something like that. I've seen like videos of people, well, a video of somebody putting out a fire with like this sonar, what, what? Some type of gun that they made that produces like the right sound wave to extinguish the fire. Then videos of like suspending small objects in the air using sound waves. Yeah. So yeah. I uh, yeah I, I and I bring this up though because with like when we talked about ghosts, I felt like everything was so easily explainable and, and debunkable, but with. This, it's like some of this alien stuff, it's just like truly what, like regardless, it's science that we don't understand. Like at the very least, it's either legitimate aliens or it is just science that we don't know. Whatever it is, it's something that is, is there to be solved. And I find that really interesting um, it, because um, it, it sounds like it, like a cliche, like alien tractor beam from the movie is what it sounds like. So what is your opinion on crop circles? Um, I, um, how do you explain any, those? Anybody can do those with They like, want the our corn, Roman. Aliens are coming down and stealing our corn. I have had no personal experience with aliens. I have not seen or heard something suspicious uh, in the sky, in the air. No personal experience. No spooky lights or noises. With aliens, there's so much stuff you see out there where it's like, sure, anything can be faked, but alien sightings and stuff like that you see on YouTube are so much more creative to the point where it's like, yeah, somebody at least had to put some creativity into making this fake or like, is it too, it, like, you know, they always say like, truth is stranger than fiction. So it's like, where did this video come from? And why was it filmed on a toaster? I do enjoy, uh, supernatural or sci-fi videos on a uh, youtube of like either people discussing these stories or like photos with little stories attached to it those are always cool to watch in my opinion because even if they're not real it's an interesting story yeah and i think like as you know i'm a very big marvel shell i love everything that company produces um if i'm not watching a marvel movie i love like alien movies love alien invasion movies not so much like independence day i find that really cheesy um yeah, it's more so of an action movie than an alien movie you're more of that uh, one movie where like the aliens are allergic to water that's what i was gonna go to because you mentioned crop circles and so i'm gonna bring up signs signs is probably oh, the first alien movie that i saw have you seen, uh, I think it's War of the Worlds? No. no. I know the tripod. But that's another thing. The tripods in War of the Worlds, they make that noise that sounds like a sky trumpet. That may be something you, the viewer, have heard before. And that's that what might, they sound like. That might be where they got the inspiration for the noise in the movie. Yeah. It's just like a really loud, like, like industrial Warbling blast. Noise. Yeah. It just, yeah. It's an it's a insane noise. But, um, yeah, I want, um, anyway, no, Signs, have you seen Signs? Mm -mm. With Joaquin Phoenix, he would play the Joker and, well, and, um, Yes, I know who Joaquin Phoenix is. But you, I feel like you told me you saw this movie before. Signs? No, yeah. never heard of it. But it's, no, it's the movie with the, this terrorized me as a child. It's the movie where the alien, there's like some kids at a birthday party, 
And um, I think we talked about this in our episode one. Actually. I said I've seen clips of this. You've seen that? Of the birthday party one? Yeah, well, let me explain it to the audience then, regardless of whether or not you remember. There's kids at the birthday party, and then they start videoing because, like, it is made news that aliens have landed. So somebody thinks they see something behind like, a bush in, like, somebody's backyard, and the kids are having a birthday party. And then it's like, you're just, you, you think you're just looking at, like, the edge of a shrub. But then all the, like, at the very last second of the video, the edge of the shrub just gets up and moves. And it's a full, like, like 10 foot tall alien, and all the kids see it. And terrifying, because, like, they just hold on it for so long. And that just scarred me as a child. I probably would just laugh at it now, but seeing it at a very young age, it was terrifying. You can never trust, uh, trust the bushes again. We recently watched a movie, which I believe that's the one you're going to bring up next. Yeah, I want to talk about Nope, because Jordan Peele is very quickly becoming one of my favorite directors. Hold up. There is Mars Needs Moms, uh, Martians in you the You're going to have to be talking about Nope to bring up Mars Needs Moms. Well, no, there's... And a- aliens in the Attic. There's one more, an old movie, The Martians, they had like their brain exposed and they can only, they were like killed by yeah, a specific yeah. sound wave and they placed this woman's head on the chihuahua. Let me see what, I gotta see what that movie's called, it's gonna kill me. Ooh, that's the, not Interstellar. Interstellar is really good, but that's not really alien related. There was, there's this one movie, I can't remember the name of it for the life of but this kid is out in the woods looking for his brother at night when something crash lands in the woods next to him. It's not E.T. Uh, the boy f- approaches it. It's this alien spaceship and he climbs in it and the AI like takes him back to the alien's home planet traveling like faster than light speed and then a day goes by for the kid and when he comes back everybody's aged like 10 years back on earth because you know that's how like light speed works if you're going light speed you'll age slower than everybody else on not going at light speed and so the whole movie is about uh the government trying to catch this uh spaceship the little boy in the spaceship trying to find his like family and reconnect with them and I forgot how, but I'm pretty sure the aliens, like... Was this just a fever dream you had? No, it's definitely a movie. I brought it up in philosophy class back at our high school, and my teacher pulled it up. He he had a fascinating interest in quantum physics and would very often derail the class. Mars Attacks was the movie you were talking about earlier with the aliens and the big globe Uh head. Yeah. Um, yes, but going back to Nope, which is the one we saw most recently, I would say. I think I know the movie. Okay, well, he looks that up. I'm going to talk about Nope. Um, I, it's so recent, I feel like I can't get too much into it, but, um, like, I don't want to spoil anything, so let's be spoiler free. It's not like a review of the movie. But, um, I am loving what Jordan Peele is doing. His previous film, Us, was also great, about, like, the doppelgangers. But this one being, like, very specifically about aliens was super, super cool. And it also features, like, speculative biology, which I'm also a really big fan of, and I'd like to do an episode on in the future. Uh, Flight of the Navigator was the movie I was talking about. My dad. 1986. Oh, I have seen that. My dad loves that movie. I loved it, too. Another great. I have it. Another great alien movie is the the one where they speak in circles. You know the one. Arrival. That's also a recent one, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it recent. Also, well, I mean, like, it was like 2015, I think. That's like seven years ago. No, but in the timeline of Alien movies, when did Arrival come out? 2016. Um, Mm. But also, I can't forget the titular Alien. The what? The Alien. (laughs) Xenomorphs! Oh, and then there's the Predator as well, and then the yeah, Alien, Alien versus, versus Predator. Predator. Yeah. But no, I, I really need to sit down and watch the original Alien again, 
Um, have you seen the original Predator? I don't really care about Predator. But have you seen the original one? I don't think so. I have. That's where the meme, one of the memes come from. Oh, yeah, the two muscular arms, yeah. Clasping uh, hands, yeah. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who else? <sighs> You're I'm lucky I know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Yeah, Luke doesn't know celebrities. And also, um, yet to come out, uh, Avatar. Blue People Avatar, not Airbender Avatar. Oh, the second one. Yeah. yeah. That is an alien movie. Yeah. I feel like we've also brought this up in one of the episodes, but um, we just got back from a trip uh, to Disney Universal. Uh, he didn't come to me with the park that day, but I was in Animal Kingdom, and they have, like, Pandora, the world of Avatar. I love that place. That, that crap's crazy. The food sucks. It but... did. You know, I went, I went mm-hmm. the canteen this time, I got a stomach ache, and, like, I got You went this... again? I didn't get the hamburger pots this time, so at least I tried something different. But Roman, I got... if the ham... How do you mess up hamburgers? If a place messes no, up No, I didn't ham- mess up the hamburgers. I just didn't get them this time because I always do. And no, I no, 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 no. You're not letting me finish. You never okay. let me finish. If a, place fin- if a place messes up hamburgers, the simplest fucking sandwich alive, besides, you know, just throwing ham and cheese on it, uh, then obviously that place doesn't have good food if they can't even make a good hamburger. I mean, it was a good hamburger. It was a terrible hamburger. Look Those at little these meat things. buns. Look at them. And tell me that's not a cute burger. Anyway. No, they tasted like shit. <laughs> okay. Um. But I I think that's all the movies I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Same here. Uh, I can't really think of any more. Just uh, please go see Nope. It's literally one of the. Yeah, I think it's the greatest film of the year. Really good. Really. Uh, one eye, one horn, flying purple people either. One eye, one horn. That's is, a song. Is that just a song, or was that like for a cartoon or something? Hell if I know, but uh, my grandpa used to play it all the time in the car when I was younger. Uh, real quick, on the topic of hamburgers, uh, portobello mushrooms, uh, some... Fuck, what's it called? Some onions, something onions. Caramelized? Caramelized onions and some melted Swiss. You have been ranting about this specific burger since before our trip. I love the burger. It's the Did perfect... Did you get one? Yeah, I've had one of those before. It's the no, perfect I mean, burger. That's great. Caramelized onions, portobello mushrooms with that melted Swiss. I guess try one. I, I don't know what to say, but um, we got to get into this. Nope was loosely inspired by the story of Skinwalker Ranch. And I say story, but it's not really a story. This, all this stuff happened. Now, I'm not even going to begin to recap what went down there. Happened? Well, okay, you say that, but there's some... None of us were there, Roman. No, but, for sure. but the ending of the story really makes you question it. So why it's my favorite uh, extraterrestrial story. Uh, well, I say extraterrestrial, but really nobody knows what it was. Paranormal, government, uh, who knows? Interdimensional. So many things happen. But essentially, Nope was loosely inspired by it. Uh, just loosely in terms of their aliens, and it's like on a, a, ranch. On a ranch somewhere, and there's horses. Uh, um, so loosely inspired. Loose. Very loosely. Um, I'm not even going to begin to give a full rundown of what happened, because there's a really wonderful series made by Bedtime Stories. I'll probably link that in the description. Um, Here's their channel icon. They they did a wonderful series on it, even with like original illustrations, and that's where I actually figured out about it. Um, but essentially, just a slew of weird things happened to I think a couple. I think there was a couple families that lived there across like the entire time all this crazy crap was happening, where like cattle would be mutilated, um, like all their blood drained out of them, like all their fluids drained out, but like just a completely dried up carcass left, and then exactly. Um, and then, um, there, there would just be, like, cattle just, like, like, tons of cattle just, like, moved into a really cramped area where they shouldn't be, and they would never go in there willingly, like, in the middle of the night. They would be, like, giant, uh, black, like, silhouetted human figures on the mountain, like, horizon that would, like, immediately, like, run away when somebody would find them, or, like, 
the same kind of figures like crawling out of white like vortexes in the side of the mountain like crap flying in the sky like that looked like military drawings stuff went on and on and on and this family was constantly tormented things would get moved around the house they'd get woken up in the middle of the night just would not end did they ever set up cameras um i don't know i think they did but i think a similar thing happened in nope where it, it would just malfunction and nothing was able to be captured did any of them like i don't know get some camo gear wrap themselves in tin foil and like crawled out there at night I don't know. I think I think like the dad camped out or something with a gun one night. But um, I bring this up. What what makes the story stick out is like I you know you hear a million and one stories like this. Where crazy stuff happens on a ranch. You have no clue if it has any validity to it. But um, I think I forget his first name. I think it's Thomas Bigelow. I think he's like a a billionaire. Uh, American billionaire. I think he runs like an airliner company or something. Let me look that up. Yeah, but he runs like Bigelow Aerospace and he's tons of money and he formed essentially the real life equivalent to Ghostbusters. He he, he concocted like a, a team of paranormal and extraterrestrial experts to figure out what's going here and bought the property. Would men in black not be a better comparison something like that too yeah um it's like a mixture yeah essentially just like we have no clue what's going on here this family could couldn't sell the property because the town folk believed all this stuff was happening they're like it's cursed we don't want to go there um and so they could not sell the house until this like billionaire bought it and made a team that cost like thousands of dollars um, to figure out what's going on here. As far as I'm aware, I think as of, uh, as recently, he sold it again, and, um, this brief window time of the property was open to tours, but it's not anymore. Unfortunately. Um, because we were gonna go and have this episode there. Uh, we were gonna go and make a trip to Skinwalker Ranch and film this episode there, but, um, it, we went and did some searching beforehand, and it is not open to the public anymore. Which, honestly, is more concerning to me. Like, if all that crap happened, like, I know there are people out there on the internet that want to go see this place. They want to go investigate. Major tourism attraction, right there. And they've barbed wired the entire property. Trespassing is always an option. Well, that. But my point is that there's something going on there. I want to know if they ever set, like, traps up at night and I like like not motion sensor because uh, like you said with the little cameras EMP things yeah but like trip wire they like fucking trip it and a claymore goes off or some shit I don't know if they did any of that but everything you would need to know about this entire story is in that series that I mentioned and um it even got illustrations to it so you can see kind of what's going on but um I think I don't think that series is completely up to date because now it's um, completely closed off. And uh, I think I think like they do still allow filming there, but it's only like for you know broadcast television, so we can't just go and with our iPhone or whatever. Um, but yeah, that that is my favorite. Like it's my personal experience, but my favorite like alien related story. Okay. I, I'm so interested in that, and it may not even be aliens; it could be paranormal. Who knows? But I'm just more inclined to believe aliens. What about? Interdimensional travel. Yeah, how, how do you think uh, faster than the speed of light travel would be possible? Do you think it's just that they strap a lot of fuel on the back of the uh, spaceship and just hit go, or do you think they like you know bend the space in between? I, I'm be honest. I'm not even gonna begin to theorize how faster than light travel is gonna happen. So we're not gonna talk about that stuff. Well, I just Good. I feel like I, I don't know. I just. Like, I don't know anything about it. So. You always see the cliche in movies where they even had it in Thor, where they folded a piece of paper mm -hmm. and stuck a pencil through it to um, ruin that kid's book. It, yeah, well, it was her book. That she wrote the book, yes, but the, the boy bought the book. That's a spoiler. And anyway, anyway, it really isn't. Anyway, it's the cliche of folding paper in half and shoving a pencil through it. You see that in many movies. I think most famously Interstellar, or maybe Event Horizon. I think they had it in there too. There was one where they did that. They ended up at Neptune or 
Uranus or whatever the fuck. And uh, when they got to the space station surrounding the planet, everybody was just gone and the power was down. So they started investigating and there was like aliens that snuck aboard and killed the original crew members. Speaking of crew members, there's another movie, uh, like Apollo something, where they go to the moon and collect space rocks, but they're actually like little spider rock things and start eating them. And Among Us. There's also I wasn't worried you would say that. That's the second time Among Us has appeared in our three episode series. When was but the first time? You said it last episode. But um, anyway. I did? Yes. Anyway, um, Interstellar gives that example of, you know, folding the paper in half and throw the pencil through because, to explain a little bit more, um, nothing that we know of can move faster than the speed of light in our universe. So if we ever want to get to these crazy far out places in the universe, we need to find something that moves quicker than the speed of light uh, and God forbid is able to transport humans at that speed. Or we have to figure out wormholes Imagine which what that would do to the human body yeah i don't want to think about it it's it, like... it would do to it would do to those cows on skinwalker ranch Ooh. but yeah i'm sorry i keep on going tangent about little alien things i saw like in movies you know like men in black and obviously uh men in black is silly goofy recently though. i watched this like little uh 20 minute short film that somebody posted and it's like a I don't remember the name of it but this guy he he's testing the very first uh faster than light travel thing he's supposed to set up this like satellite at Mars and he ends up going past Mars and ending up at this like alien spaceship the size of a planet and then these like two little eye things come out they like disintegrate him and then rebuild him back on Earth. Wait, to what is this? I lost, I lost the, your train of thought. What is this? Uh, it's something about aliens. No, but like a movie? No, like a 20 minute short film thing. Oh. Speaking about short films, um, Melody Sheep is another really good YouTube channel. Uh, we just watched one of their videos before this to kind of jog our uh, interest in alien stuff. They make some high quality. Uh, documentaries uh, all free on YouTube, which is insane. We also watched Outside In about how to turn a sphere inside out. To go back to what I was saying, when you fold a paper in half and shove the pencil through, it's it's supposed to symbolize a wormhole, meaning like these two points on the paper that were once like really far apart. You know what? I want to do it. I want to be the. I want to be able to do that. I always see it in movies. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. always wanted to do this. Okay. All right, y'all. So here, here's like the, the fabric of our universe, right? All right. All right. Okay. This the sheet of paper here. And say, say we want to get from one point to another instantaneously, right? Okay. Um, obviously that's impossible with the current way of things. They're not next to each other. But it's like, what if you went ahead and did this and bent space time? So, uh, and then you could just punch a hole through it like this and get from one spot to another instantaneously. So that's like, I think the two leading ideas of how we could travel vast distances across space. Right. They showed in Guardians of the Galaxy too. Uh, they call them jump points in there. But it's either we have to develop faster than light travel that can transport humans along with us or bend the entirety of space and time. Which seems a little bit more difficult to me, yeah. but they both sensei. seem difficult. Sensei, sen sensei, teacher, bro, yeah. oh. I got a question. Yes. Pick up the paper. Uh-huh. So this is space time, right? Yeah. What the fuck is this stuff up here? That's, why, is it, why is it frayed like that? That's the, that's the back rooms. I can, I can crumple this, right? Yeah. That's your sketchbook. It's my sketchbook? Yeah. You tore out my sketchbook? Mm. 
UFO. What about him? Was that a crumpled up piece of paper? <laughs> Nobody knows. Um, oh, I wanted to touch on briefly the released military documents and like videos of mm, UFOs. Never watched any well, of it. They, they're they very obviously like, uh, like foreign nation technology that they don't want us to know about, um, which is arguably more frightening because the way those things move, I, it's frightening what these other countries have that we don't know about. Now, I know it's not aliens, but like, have you ever heard that theory that like, the earth is a hollow inside, there's like a sun at the core, like, people are like walking yeah, the in. hollow earth yeah that's i love that i really do you don't believe in it though no of course okay not. good we're both sphere earthers can we can we put our foot down and say that the earth is a tetrahedron though oh god it's oh actually god. more of an egg shape due to how the uh, moon that's and true. sun is positioned that's true the earth isn't a perfect sphere it is kind of funky it's, looking what was an elliptical an ellipse ellipses I don't know. that's the triple thought isn't but I want to get into the bigger stuff um, because uh, using those wormholes or using faster than light travel to get to far distances is the goal so we can find these alien civilizations out there yes because the thing is like we have seen all the planets around us we know like our there's our solar system we we pretty much figured out there's no like civilizations I mean maybe we might find like bacteria or something Look, there's no like intelligent life pretty much anywhere in our solar system. So, Some would argue there's no intelligent life here either. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, once you go beyond our solar system, there's a lot of distance you got to cover, and that's harder to see. Um, so using stuff like you know faster than light travel or wormholes or something like that, um, you know, could get us to those places. Some people actually think that black holes are wormholes. Yeah. Um, some people also think that if you go into a black hole, you get atomized. So maybe they're both. Maybe you just wouldn't know if you made it to the other side. You're just particles. Well, you, you'd have to make something that could withstand the uh, force of the black hole. That's another very difficult challenge. But um, essentially, there are tons of other planets that we know about, not even in our solar system, that's a lot like Earth and would be very capable of supporting Earth-like life. I say Earth-like because just because life evolved on this planet doesn't mean it can't evolve on one radically different. So either be carbon or silicon based. Well, that we know of right now. We know that those two options are possible. Yeah, there might be some hidden element that we haven't found yet that could work. Yeah, it's just like, what if this element just never made it to Earth, you know? We just don't even know about it. I want to talk about like ways we can notice them, and this is kind of uh, what that video I was talking about earlier where um, there's so many different ways. We've been sending out radio signals from Earth. We also sent that one satellite. We sent satellites, um, but they could also like make these giant lasers or photon beams or what do they call those things? Neutrinos, which can like pass through a planet and need like a huge like giant building to even detect a few of them. It's just like different types of particles that you shoot just out into space and hope that a civilization can detect them. I say we build a giant loudspeaker and we all just yell. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the worst possible song? What would uh, be the worst ooh. possible song to play? Uh, Kill All Xenos. Uh, it's a little indie song I found by accident. It's about this guy killing aliens. I was thinking Crazy Frog. How do you feel about billionaires grabbing their favorite celebrity and going have a little romp in space for a few minutes? Well, Like that's... Mr. Bezos and Mr. Shatner. So, like, the next level of the Mile High Club? Mm. Except with, like, celebrities getting freaky? about William Shatner getting freaky. Who was he with? <laughs> Jeff Bezos. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've seen worse things on the fan, but archives of our so own. So this is going to be the part of the episode that we have to cut out, um, as usual. 
fanfic uh, writers, you know what to do. Dyson spheres. Ooh, those are like giant solar panels around yeah, the sun. Yeah, but that's a way that we could detect an alien civilization without them even having tried in the first place. Because we can look at stars in the distance um, and see, like, if something passes in front of them, like a planet that's much closer to us or an asteroid that's much closer to us, it'll dim the light or block it out entirely. There's that's, a lot of stars out there to watch. Yes, there's a million chances we have for this to be the case. Now, to explain what a Dyson Sphere is, like Luke was saying, it's just a big, like, um, big object built around a sun. It encompasses an entire sun, so it's, it's like a crazy thing to even think about building, because you think about how much bigger the sun is, even compared to Earth. But they also have mirrored surfaces on the inside of it that would work as a way for a civilization who built it to obtain energy from their sun at like an all-time high. The wow signal? I heard that was just a complete coincidence. Can you explain yes, that? But I don't even know really. The, the, uh, n neither can I, but you know, the wow signal happened. What was it though? Just a, like somebody, one of those big telescopes, or not telescopes, but the big uh, satellite dishes picked up? Picked up something that like wasn't normal and yeah. I, I know there's something where like the people were, they thought they were picking up something, but it was actually just like the microwave in the break room <laughs> that they were picking See, up. This is why I just. It's just very funny. In connection with Dyson Sphere, though, I think like the create like once a civilization creates a Dyson Sphere, that um, gives it a new ranking on what they call the Kardashev scale. It's like infinite energy. Currently, we are like Earth humans. We are a zero type civilization. <laughs> I think to become a Type One, we would need to um, harness all. The energy of our Earth, be able to completely control all the energy on our Earth. And then I think type two, I should put up a picture here because I don't know if what I'm saying is correct, but type two is all the energy of your solar system, aka, aka building something like a Dyson Sphere uh, to capture all the energy coming from your sun and be able to tra 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 traverse the planets in your solar system. And then I think, uh, did you say three or four? The next one is your entire galaxy. And the next one is your entire universe, and it keeps going up and up and up, and then um, it's just a way to measure like civilizations. We can very easily turn a Dyson sphere into a weapon, taking all the energy from the uh, Dyson sphere and concentrating it into a single beam. It's like a Death Star. Ah, uh, it's stupid. That's a stupid name for something. There's also a Dyson Swarm, which instead of um, one big structure around the sun, it's a bunch of like satellite solar panels that are just in a big swarm that orbit. Yeah, I know. Um, which, if it's just a solid orb built around the sun, I, I don't think even know if that would work. Yeah, I and, think the swarm is the best bet. Yeah, and we couldn't detect it if it, the sun was just always blocked out to begin with. And then... Uh, a swarm could be detectable, and then I also see like depictions of a Dyson sphere where it's like several like bands that loop around itself. But if they're looping around as they should, um, it would be at a like consistent pace. And if you see a star flickering like that at a consistent pace, you know it's not just like debris floating in front of it. It's a it's a machine made thing. Well, I thought. Well, I mean. It would have to be really big debris to block out part of the sun. Yeah. It's a great, yeah, no, it's an insane thing to build, but. Well, I guess there are like planets and shit. But that's another thing that would make a Dyson Swarm better is that it's often just like really like super, super thin mirrors. So like if you were actually build like a Dyson Sphere, you would need multiple planets worth of like minerals and stuff to make it, so. Well, if they're just using like the super advanced translucent uh, solar panels so they still absorb the energy but the light just goes through so that they're like you know not detectable by other alien species that's unfortunate but even still if we detect like a Dyson sphere that's frightening because they are so powerful 
Um, yeah, like I said, Dyson Spear, weapon, bang. Yes. They could wipe us out in a second. Think about how scary that is. Our thousands of years of evolution and civilizational advancements put to, the, put to an end like a snap. And then considering how tiny our planet is, just in comparison to our solar system, then our galaxy, and then the universe as a large, we are but a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Is that a quote? Yeah. I don't know who said it, though. It's a good quote. I don't know who said it either. But that reminds me, um, if you haven't seen the Webb telescope photos that were just released, uh, they just like launched a new telescope and it's been taking some, yeah, some great photos. Um, and you don't realize, like, a lot of the pictures you see online of galaxies and planets are just, like, artist renderings. This is real photos, and they're some of the best humankind has ever seen. It's crazy. Pretty fucking cool. It's like a, a singular photo of hundreds of galaxies. And think about how many planets are there, and, like, you could be staring at a civilization. An entire history. Think about it. All of our engineering and technical prowess... And we're just getting, and we can just barely get photos of this thing, such as like the universe and then black holes. Yeah, the black hole photo that came in a little while earlier. Um, but I want to ask you, why do you personally think we have not seen anything yet? Uh, simply because they're not advanced enough to contact us, we're not advanced enough to contact them. Uh, there haven't been any Dyson Spheres yet. Or they're just way, way too far away. Yeah, I pretty much agree with that. I think it's just they're in a pretty similar position to us. Some people think that we're late to the game. We missed a, like, cosmic golden age. Uh, some people think we're the first. And it's our responsibility to go out there and, and go across the planets and explore. That would be a very cool story. That we're the last or the first? Uh, I don't want to go on a tangent explaining my story idea because then, you know, it'll distract from this. Alright, uh, I'm gonna go explain my story idea that I had right now. So, jump cut. So, here was my little story idea. It's, it's nothing too advanced or, uh, I guess original. I'm not sure how many people, uh, made stories like it but uh start off with this like singular super advanced species that uh to further advance their technological uh abilities they started to dampen their motions so that they could continue advancing at a quicker pace you know since they don't have to worry about ethics anymore uh and so, as an experiment, they started taking their DNA and spreading it out to other planets to cultivate new life. Just like seeing how they evolve in different environments and seeing how useful they are. The more useful ones are kept as slaves for this working, uh, for this upper class, super intelligent beings. While the uh, the ones that didn't quite fit their standards were, you know, taken out. They glassed the planet. And so that brings me to the humans portion of the story. See, uh, these super advanced beings, they couldn't discover any other civilization throughout the universe. So they decided to, you know, make their own. And then... The humans come in for the first time, and this advanced order is, I don't want to say freaking out because they dampen their emotions, but they're all of a sudden interested and wanting to see how far these humans have come and how they've evolved. But the humans who held on to their uh, ethics and emotions are disgusted by what they're doing, so the humans start jumping around on the planets and making deals and uplifting these slave castes that these aliens made. 
then it just like shifts over to an entire war of the humans plus all of their allies who have basically uh, born from the same alien. Right. Um, so something that looking for alien life uh, begs the question for is what do they look like? So what do you think they look like? Fuck if I know. Yeah. Uh, probably something to fit their environment. Exactly. At least that's how we know evolution works on this planet. But that's something well, that I... Mean, I... It's probably going to work on other I, planets. I, I, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. But um, something I love is speculative evolution. And that could be like what um, Earth creatures evolve to look like in the future. Or what completely alien creatures evolve like on alien planets with you know, different gravity... Uh, like tidal lock or you know all kinds of crazy stuff less or more oxygen all affects how creatures look uh, in their environment well to start off they'll need some type of skeletal structure to support the weight of their own gravity unless they're not all creatures have skeletons I was getting to that uh well I think inverted oh that's right inverted wait do they actually have I know they say they don't have skeletons, but is it like... Octopi are just uh, tissue and a cartilaginous beak. The way I see it, uh, the bigger you grow, the you're gonna need bone structure to support yourself. Uh, if it's a high gravity uh, planet, then the animals are gonna be, uh, have thicker bones, thicker muscles, and are going to be short and closer to the ground, while uh, places with high, uh, lo low gravity obviously won't need that much. They could be taller, uh, thinner bones, maybe hollow like birds. And then, really, it just comes down to what size these aliens are going to be. They're really small, obviously, the gravity won't affect them as much, and uh, they could have, you know, less bones. And this is the case for carbon-based life, because that's the only life we know. Well, and I mean, I, I think silicon-based beings are going to need uh, some type of structure as well. I think they're going to develop bones at the very least. I, I don't know. I'm just saying we've never seen silicon-based life. We only we only know that it's a possibility. That's all I'm saying. But, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy speculative evolution projects. Something I can think of just off the top of my head is All Tomorrows by C.M. Kozman. Um, it's like an illustrated uh, speculative uh, evolution thing about the future of uh, humans after they've sort of been warped and changed by these crazy mad scientist aliens. So I highly sort recommend... Like checking that out sort of like the story i just oh fuck they well, already did it I, I mean like i don't think it's wholly original i just think well, it was I, just... I i prefaced it with saying it won't no i'm not saying your story original. i'm saying the concept in general isn't wholly original i know but um it's you had to turn spin to it so you're good there's that and then there's often like people hear speculative biology or speculative zoology and they think it's more than it actually is, but you know, anytime you pretty much see aliens that are kind of thoughtfully created in any media, that's kind of speculative biology. Uh, so, for example, um, Alex Reese is an artist that I'm really a big fan of uh, on Twitter, at least that's where I follow him, and he actually created all the creature design for the Subnautica games. So, yeah, um, Alex Reese is probably most famous for. Um, his creature design for the Subnautica video games, and also he created his own speculative alien race called the Baron. And I find it really unique and interesting because it's a um, intelligent species, like human level, they have society. Um, it's not even like a utopian paradise where they all get along. He, he like draws art where they're like at a riot, protesting against the government, and just these crazy like quadrupedal alien creatures doing very human things um, is, su is super is super interesting to me and uh, I highly recommend you go check out his art and he was inspired by um, uh, Wayne Barlow which is another one of my favorite artists um, he did a book I 
forget the name of it. Um, I think I have it sitting on a shelf somewhere. But uh, here's the cover right here, and I bought it, um, where it's focused on um, more speculative biology uh, of different types of aliens from different planets. But he also sometimes doesn't focus so much on the science of it in his like Hell series, where he kind of gives his own depiction of Hell. And there's these just weird abstract creatures that communicate through like these glowing red glyphs. Just love his work. Um, but I think I first got to know him when he made his Alien Planet documentary for, I think it was Discovery Channel? I don't know. But it's my favorite documentary of all time, and I've actually got to talk to him a couple times over uh, Instagram about it, and I just love all his work uh, that he's done for that documentary too, and I love the creature design. So I highly recommend you go check out Sam Kozman, Alex Reese. Wayne Barlow, and there's so many other projects that are displayed on the Curious Archive, which is a channel that I've been really into lately that highlights speculative evolution and speculative biology projects, so. Anyway. Okay. You had a story. So, real quick. Uh, do you think aliens will be biologically compatible with humans? If you're asking what I think you're asking, no. I'm asking, so no, no half human, half alien hybrids, no? No. Well, we'll just have to see about that. Life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Jeff Goldblum out of this. That man deserves better. Okay. Anyways, uh. We should well, do a dinosaur episode. Now that we're on the topic of Jeff Goldblum, we should do a dinosaur episode. What I actually wanted to say was, a. Uh, I browse a little, uh, free... What are you about to... The story into? writers, like, people just writing short little stories, or sometimes, like, actual fucking books worth of information uh, about, like, sci-fi. Uh, it doesn't have to be sci-fi, it could be fantasy, but, uh, there's, like little subcategories which really are just the same thing but they're just giving different names uh earth is space australia whereas like uh humans enter the universe as a large and are welcomed by this space confederacy and earth uh they never expected a planet like earth to have life on it because of just how violent it was and how we have a shit ton of dangerous creatures and environments on it. The next one being uh, humans are space orcs. Those stories mostly promote that like uh, humans enter the space community as a large and at least one thing or just everything about us is just so vastly strange or superior or just different from the other alien societies that they sort of see us as like this uh I don't want to say aliens because they're all aliens but just we're vastly different to the aliens in a wild way that just shocks the universe as a large and humans are space bards are essentially the same thing as humans are space orcs except instead of us being vastly superior in uh, some type of physical aspect we're vastly superior in our art forms or just seducing other aliens why the like bard orc connection like why like the D, &D race class why that choice of words? Uh, I believe uh, where space orcs came from was uh, it started off with like a person going on a little rant about how they didn't like how in uh, sci-fi stories humans are seen as the weak link and then start listing all the amazing things that humans can do like hysteria strength or uh, what? You know, hysteria strength. Whenever, like, you've never heard of hysteria strength? Oh, like when, like, a ch like a mother's child is in danger and she, like, lifts the lifts fucking the car, truck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
or uh, how we can survive in extreme conditions even if we're really badly injured. And so because of that, they're like, yeah, humans are like space orcs. We're built tough and rough and we could really rumble down. Yeah, and even in, like to put a more positive spin on that, even in the toughest situations, um, like humans just cannot like go without making themselves just more mentally sound. Like we have, like when we're just in a bad situation as as a species together, um, whether that's like an oppressive government or just like a bad situation, the time bad environment you're living in, we come together amongst our, our fellow people and i hope that's something shared our across the galaxy our straw uh, our best motivation is spite and just being really petty yeah like sure we we certain, you could you could see that in our war certain groups of humans hate other groups of humans but those groups the people in those groups will do anything to raise their spirits and keep their spirits high and i think that's wonderful then you know they it was once they got humans are space orcs it was very easy to jump from that to uh humans are space bards since the D, &D connection was already there well, i'm interested to see what other versions they have come up next and then humans are uh earth is space australia is you know very easy connection to make a lot of people say that Australia is just filled with the most dangerous stuff there, and so that's essentially what Earth is to the greater universe. Yeah, and like you were saying about like uh, space orgs being like um, just so radically different from the majority of other aliens, that's something that I think a lot of science fiction fails in is the aliens just look like humans with stuff slapped on their faces. And I know that's done in movies for budgetary reasons, obviously, but um, that's why I love speculative evolution artwork so much, because they can do just whatever the hell they want. Um, so there can be intelligent species that have like four eyes on eye stalks, or um, like the Biren uh, that I talked about, uh, or quadrupedal. I think actually like they're hexapods, I think they may have six, I forget. But it, it's just like there's so many different ways, or like the, the Eo sapiens by Wayne Barlow, that have like just a giant gaseous sac that encases their brain, but also allows them to float. Yet they're primitive species and carved stone tools like cavemen. Men they look incredibly intelligent, but they have the intelligence of Neanderthals. It's crazy. Men in Black did that well. They had interesting uh, alien biology. From what I remember, Men in Black just had people slapped like metal on their faces. Well, not the all of them. No. I think Slimer from the Ghostbusters is more creative. There was a giant cockroach alien. It like stuffed itself in a human body. That's true. Yeah. And then there's the little uh, invertebrate little walking bug people. Oh, yeah. And then at the desks of one of them, there's like the uh, multi tendrilled thing slapping yeah. around on the computer. Did you see the new one with Tessa Thompson and, and um, Chris the Hemsworth? Thor. It was it's like it had Liam Neeson in it too. It's like a couple years ago. You, you keep on explaining movies to me by using the names of the actors. It was I, a recent Men in Black movie with Thor. Do you know what I'm talking about? And no. Tessa Thompson is Valkyrie. She was in it. I <laughs> anyway, was who the was the main is, lead? Was the main Thor. lead Chris Hemsworth? Thor. The main lead wasn't a female. No. Then, no, I do not know which one you're talking about. Okay, um, but uh, regardless, they had some cool alien designs in there where it, they were just completely indescribable. Um, like, it, it got to, like, Lovecraftian territory, which, if you stretch it, Lovecraft, kind of like speculative uh, biology and stuff like that, but he's, like, way, like, he doesn't put science to it. He's just, like, unknowable horrors. He's the guy who made Cthulhu, <laughs> as you probably know. First, uh, on the Cthulhu topic, just... Cthulhu being an alien, and they come down to Earth like, well, Mal, look at these little shits. I'm gonna traumatize this one and have him write books about me. Cthulhu is the most boring one. 
Once you start looking into the mythos of all these crazy gods that Lovecraft created. I know, but that's the only one I, uh, I know, uh, two others, and that's only because of the Lovecraftian dating sim. Mm -hmm, dating sim, I swear. Uh, <laughs> The King in Yellow, I like that one. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say, it, it's not a god or a creature, but it's, um, what is... I don't know what it is. It's it, like a planet. I no. I want to talk well, about. Well, I want to talk about the color out of space. Well, can I continue with my few yes. things first? Uh, okay. You also mentioned like a silhouette filled with like stars and galaxy in it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a dream like that where I was like in the third person watching my own body move about, but in the distance there was this like silhouette of a man filled with stars, and, like. Each time my third person point of view was obstructed, he would just get a little closer and a little closer. And he was staring at me and the third person me, not my body. Like a weeping angel situation? Yeah. Except, you know, I'm the only one that mattered when it turned, came to who couldn't see. Yeah. It, it was terrifying. I could, like, feel fear in a dream. I have so many nightmares. So many nightmares like that. But anyway. I have been shot in dreams before. Yeah, they are not fun. One time I got shot and then bled out, and then I woke up. That was definitely not fun. It doesn't really affect me in my wake life, but in the dream, like, I've never... Like, I have experienced the worst possible things in my life in a dream. Wendigos. That's another reoccurring okay. We should leave this we one gotta stop. We gotta Dr Dreams and, and cryptids, whole different episodes. We, we'll do it later. Um, but, um, what was I saying? Color, space. Color out of space. That uh, was recently, is a Lovecraft story recently adapted into a movie starring Nicolas Cage. I know you know who that is. Um, and yeah, uh, was a perfect choice for that role because Lovecraftian uh, uh, stories are crazy and Nick Cage could pull that off. But it's about a meteorite that lands in like a small like farm town family's yard and they don't think anything of it. They think it's just a meteorite, and they stupidly like go and like poke and prod at it. I mean, I would. And it's Lovecraft story, so they everybody who touches it and gets next to it like morphs and mutates into a horrible monster. Like the mother and son like fuse together and walk around like a spider. Seems like a win. -win it's terrifying, but they call it the color out of space because the, the characters say it's a color that they can't describe. They don't like it. It's not like any color they've ever seen before. And in the movie, it's depicted as like a pink purple kind of color um, because that color actually doesn't really exist on the visible spectrum for us. What happens is that it takes the two ends of the visible spectrum of color, which is like violet and red, and, and the mixes background. them together a little bit. So technically, it's like that's the perfect color to choose for that movie because really we're not seeing that color in real life. Uh, real quick, you just remind me of something. Uh, then yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, I haven't seen that one. But have you read the book? I know 42. That's all I know. I don't care for the book or the movie, but I love the concept of it, where just everything out in outer space is just absolutely absurd. Uh, they have this planet built. Spoiler alert, by the way. They have this... Uh, planet builder the earth is just like a supercomputer uh they have a sentient color blue they have this spaceship that literally runs on paradoxes i just love this movie seems right up your alley the um, movie wasn't good the, the book was better and then another thing i'm i'm, I'm just gonna i'm just gonna Throw it out there, I'm not going to talk that. Homestuck. <laughs> Homestuck, the aliens, there are, there are Alternians, then there's the Felt, and then the Cherubs, just, then, you know, the humans of the story. Listen, then, then listen, the listen, 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 listen. Then the Prospects and the Dursites. Listen, we're going to do an episode where you just rant, and I'm not here. Okay. I just rant. You just go. Just let loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't be here. 
I'm gonna start that off by explaining the entirety of Homestuck, you know. Do you realize if you just made a video that was just like, home, like the entire history of Homestuck, a video essay, and I actually did it and uploaded it to YouTube, you would get millions of views. People love entire history of. Well, people then, love uh, video essays. Well, then that's good for your YouTube channel. Yeah, you film it, and I'll upload it. There we go. All right, just warn me ahead like three weeks so I could just binge read Homestuck again. God. It took me a week the first time I read it, so I stayed up very, very late at night reading it. To be clear, I don't partake in Homestuck. I don't find it uh, really too interesting. Not the case with this guy, um, and it's been that way for years, unfortunately. But um... They write... Uh, Andrew Hussey wrote the perfect cringy 13-year-olds. They're, like, written so cringy, like, that it's amazing. It's simultaneously yeah. the best and worst thing I've ever read. Check it out, everybody. I wanted to sort of wrap uh, this episode up with aliens' connections to uh, the biblical and the ancient and stuff like that. There are, like, paintings with, like, UFOs. Yeah. And, like, I don't know if, if y'all have heard, like, the biblical de depiction of an alien. I mean, angel. the biblical depiction of an angel. Um, where they are just spinning golden wheels covered in eyes and wings on fire and glowing. Holy shit. <laughs> now that I think about it, the, the eyes being like the lights on the flying saucer, the wings of fire, you know, the engines, then the spinning rings know how in space, you know, spinning rings to add for gravity. Yeah, to, to be clear, it, 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 regardless, it is oddly mechanical for something that of that age before probably the wheel was even invented. And um, it j just well, truly... Well, they, they had to have Yeah, wheels. yeah, I know, I know, I know. Completely out of place. Like, the description of, of like, biblically accurate angels are insane. And not only that, but their body plan is a Dyson Sphere. It's the same thing. Oh my god. Where it's, it's Jesus disc fuck. rotating around themselves. I know that sounds like a wild conspiracy theory thing, but like, if, look, Dyson Sphere, biblically, biblically accurate angel, look at it, they're the same thing. You're fucking destroying my mind right now, Roman. So I'm just, my. Oh, this is all to say, Jesus was an alien, and... Um, Either that, <laughs> or kidding. it's the hollow earth and they're an advanced civilization living underneath us. I, I, I'm just saying, I, like, I know it sounds like I should be wearing a tinfoil hat, but I do not think it should be put off that aliens visited us before. Way in our past. Maybe even ignited our evolution. <laughs> Which is incredibly upsetting. I would like to think that we as a human race did this on our own without any interference. I wish, like, if there's aliens out there and they're already, like, advanced and connected with each other, like, I really hope it's, like, Star Trek where they have, like, the Galactic Federation and they all get along and they don't interfere with, with uh, developing planets. I'd love that. But, what who knows? Mushrooms are a super advanced symbiotic alien and that's how we evolved because we ate mushrooms which uh symbiotically fused together with us and that's why people have allergic reactions when eating mushrooms because it's like we're eating part of ourselves you know people also say that um when people like trip on mushrooms or acid or something like that it's not just a trip. You're seeing things. Um, what's what's that drug that people talk like DMT or BMT? Uh, Some hallucinogen. DMT. DMT. Um, LSD. There there are things acid. called there are things called DMT beings that apparently multiple people have I thought taken. It was it. DMT demons or DMT elves? I'm sure it's the same thing. Where it's people who take that drug um, see the same shit. 
yeah, we're such lightweights, we don't know anything about that. But um, yeah, they see these weird, like tall, like black creatures, like elf-like. With, with, it's so sure. I, I love, I love it when like people do something and they're like multiple people do the same thing and they're not expecting to get any certain result and they all come back with the same result like that. They all saw this strange creature. To clarify, neither of us have ever willingly taken drugs. And with that, I think we should wrap up the video. All right. Let us know if you've seen these DMT aliens. Please don't tell our audience to take it. See you next time. Bye.